Disasters can awaken the best in our humanity, inspiring collaboration from governments, corporations, foundations and charities, and the public at large. To shed light on the dynamic and important relationship between charities and donors, BBB's Give.org recently released a report on disaster relief donor expectations. I'm joined today by Kitty Block, President and CEO of the Humane Society of the United States, to share some of her reactions and insights. Please tell us a little bit about the important role that your organization plays in disaster relief. The Humane Society of the United States and our family of organizations has a global disaster effort. And what we do is we come in um, under all sorts of circumstances, uh, when there are floods, when there are freezing rains, when there are fires. And we provide technical assistance, on the ground rescues, and we build not just for immediate services and help, but we build for the long-term future and health of that community. So it's, it's coming in at the moment of the crisis, and then it's also staying with that um, area, that community, to make sure that the animals and the people that are working with them um, have what they need to, to really help the lives of these animals. We asked more than 2,100 potential donors how they feel about disaster-related appeals and found that only 24% of respondents say appeals are very clear about what disaster response activities a charity will carry out. Fundraising appeals are often the most meaningful contact between charities and donors, and they can strengthen or weaken their bond. As a charity that responds to disasters, but has a broader set of programs, can you share some lessons you've learned in communicating with the donating public about how their contributions will be used? Communicating with the public about their, their donations for disasters is key, and we are proactive about it. We put on our website information about our rescue fund, so people know um, where their funds are gonna go, how they're gonna be used. And for us, it's about people understanding that you need to use funds right away, sometimes before you even go out with an appeal, which is usually what happens. So we hold some back in reserve from a, a previous disaster so we can respond right away and not worry about raising the funds. We can just get out there and do the work that needs to be done, working with our shelter partners, rescuing these animals, moving them across state lines, whatever is needed. And so we also, not only are we proactive about it, but then we are very responsive. So people become involved in these stories. Disaster work and, and the relationship with the supporters, is, it can be really personal. They care about the individual story. They see on the news, they want to know what's happened. You told them you're going out to do this work, they want to know what the follow-up is. So we're very responsive. We let them know how many animals we rescued, where, where we've taken those animals, how people can get involved, how they can support. And so it's, a, it's an ongoing relationship and we build in feedback because that's really important. We also found that expectations about how quickly charities should spend collected funds are not uniform. For example, approximately one-third of donors assume that charities will spend contributions as quickly as possible, but other donors assume funds will be spent carefully over time or that some money will be spent for immediate needs and some for long-term needs. How does the Humane Society of the United States manage this diversity of donor expectations? I think the best way to manage uh, donor expectations is to be upfront about it. We're very clear. We talk about how we use the funds. Um, for, if we're going directly to this particular uh, hurricane or this particular flood or fire, but we also say that we are using this money for long-term investment in these areas. And of course, it's usually the bulk of the money is used for the particular disaster, and we again, we let our donors know. Celebrity disaster relief fundraisers have been prominently featured in recent years. We asked people who reported contributing to a celebrity's disaster relief fundraiser about their motivations to give. And the most popular reasons were being a fan of the celebrity and the trust in the celebrity's ability to choose. But not all celebrities soliciting funds identify a benefiting charity or clearly outline how donations will be used. Please tell us about Humane Society's experience working with celebrities and any insights about what makes a celebrity's fundraising appeal trustworthy. 
So when we work with a celebrity, we talk about the, the whole scope of the work we do. So they're really invested and they understand. So once they have that connection, they make the best spokespeople for it. And so the ones we work with, we do spend that time and they usually work with us on other issues because they come in really invested in the cause. I think one of the key things is, is to make sure that when celebrities do speak out, I mean, they have their voice and their, you know, as, as you mentioned in your study, they have so much um, power to bring in people to support an issue because people know them, trust them, see them, and they really want to be a part of what they support. So when celebrities support uh, a cause, it's just very important that they, they check it out, that they, they are very specific about where to go because sometimes a celebrity can say a great organization, but the link they may give is not to a donation site or it may take them in a different place where people get confused. So I think as long as the celebrity really takes the time to, to make sure they, they know the organization and that they have all the appropriate information to direct those people once they have their attention, to direct them to the, the right site. Because when people get involved and want to give, they only have so much time to do it. And if they have to navigate and really try to you know, sleuth through where to go, it, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the bottom line in bringing in those funds. To learn more about the Give.org Disaster Relief Donor Expectations Report, please visit Give.org.